Good morning. Students, I think you have understood the first part that is protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is the process in which the required proteins are produced depending on the requirement of the cell by combining various amino acids and different different combinations. And we already know that this information will be there in the DNA and will be transferred to the mRNA then to the ribosomes where tRNA will read this. Then its continuation I am explaining you here it is named as genetic code. What is genetic code? It is the coding language of nitrogen bases that can code for a particular amino acid. So how to define genetic code? It is the coding language of nitrogen base coding language of what nitrogen bases that code for particular amino acid right okay? this actually we already know that during protein synthesis I explained you during translation that 3 3 nitrogen bases code for one amino acid that's why we call it as triplet coding language but imagine the time when the people did not know how is coding language. That time is the story. The people, all we all know in scientific world, they know that there are three, four nitrogen bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine on DNA that will be coded or that will be transferred to the mRNA by AUGC. These four nitrogen bases produce 20 amino acids. That is a question, right? Based on how many nitrogen bases code for one amino acid, genetic code is decided, right? So, nitrogen bases we have are totally four. Amino acids to be produced are 20. This was it. This is the target, right? Among four nitrogen bases, in what combinations 20 amino acids can be formed? So, beginning when there was no clue about this. Scientists thought that it may be a singlet codon language or it was singlet coding language, singlet codon. So types I have explained. Singlet refers to one. So if one nitrogen base codes for one amino acid, then we call it as a singlet coding language. So it is equal to one nitrogen base forming one amino acid. But how many can be produced? With this, you can produce only 4 amino acids. So, this can result only in 4 amino acids because there are only 4 nitrogen bases present. A for 1, U for 1, G for 1, C for 1, over. Therefore, singlet coding language will not hold good for the complete 20 amino acid coding. Right? They cannot produce 20 amino acids. So, first singlet coding language was considered to be wrong coding language. Right? Second type they tried, tried with doublet coding language. That's called doublet codon. What is doublet codon? Two nitrogen bases code for one amino acid. How many are possible? Tell me. How many? Nitrogen, how many amino acids are possible if two nitrogen bases code for one amino acid? Most of them they think that it is either two or four. But remember, it is two in all different combinations. So let me put that doublet coding language in a checkerboard like fashion. You will understand how many we can produce. So first doublet singlet codon was failed. Now I am talking about the doublet coding language. What is that I am saying? First imagine we have U, then A, then we have C, then we have G. Again U, A, C, G. Okay? Make the combinations how many are possible. Okay? So this I expect you to write also. Okay. Then how many are possible? U, U for 1. U A for 1, U C for 1, U G for 1, like that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16 combinations are possible. So, if it is a doublet coding language, 
in doublet coding language you can get only 16 combination 16 amino acids as two nitrogen bases code for one amino acid but what was the requirement we required 20 amino acids to be coded by these four nitrogen bases therefore doublet codon language is failure it's incorrect then they tried for triplet coding language what do you mean by triplet coding language three nitrogen bases must code for one amino acid right so how it is possible you have to make three three common three nitrogen bases for one amino acid so i'll continue with this you can observe how i'm writing here i write u a c g u a c g u a c g and last one u a c g right how do you combine u u u the first codon u u a second codon then u u c u u c then u u g right u u g these are the four codons so in each group each square we have four then we have 16 combinations totally how many are produced totally 62 combinations are produced 62 are the total combinations right 16 into 16 squares into 4 okay that is 62 combinations so i want you to write all these combinations that will be your next homework what to write all the combinations of 62 right then you write in your book ncrt book they have given which codon codes for which amino acid they have given it right i wanted you to fill this whole checkerboard or it's a genetic coding table with the types of amino acids also right then only you will be able to solve the other type of questions means what codon codes for what amino acid so like this you have to fill it up right there are so many combinations possible i told you 62 combinations were possible and full you are you are going to write it till here right let me write one one more one c c u c c a c c c c c g c c g then then you keep on writing for all the 16 squares with four four codons there is a total coding language. So this, they thought it may be a coding language. But still, it has 64 combinations, not 62, 64 combinations, with, which is still higher than how much we wanted is 20. Right? We have, these are totally 16 into 4. 64 combinations are producing. 64 combinations is too high enough. Nah? We wanted only not 62, I'm sorry, it is 64 combinations are produced. So these 64, how are they useful? So if you think it is a triplet coding language, how it is useful? How all these 64 codons code for only 20 amino acids? That was the question mark. Now, next I'll give you the characters of the genetic code. Why these all 64 combinations were acceptable, right? So there are totally 64 combinations and the coding language was proved to be triplet coding language, right? Now you have to write this table and give me the details of the table, okay? So this table I want you to fill it up completely with the amino acids, okay? That will be your homework, okay? Everyone have to show me, only few of you people are giving me the homework and showing that this much I have done madam that other people whether they are watching it or are they writing it I am not able to understand so I want everybody to write because these are the basics of biological subject that to genetics basic genetics we have to know all this ok now let me tell you why this triplet codon or coding language was language was considered to be the right coding language right this triplet codon language so now i'll tell you the triplet codon language triplet codon why it was proved to be a right coding language first thing who are the scientists who were the scientists who deciphered the secret language of genetic code the secret language of genetic code was deciphered by scientists 
हर गोविंद एच जी खुराना एंड अलोंग विद हिम मार्शल निरनबर्ग Nirenberg. These were the two scientists. One is H. G. Khorana, Hargobi Khorana from India. Then Marshall Nirenberg, along with Robert Hawley, they shared the Nobel Award for the deciphering of genetic code. Deciphering is the breaking the secret language. It's called deciphering. They deciphered the genetic code and they awarded the Nobel Prize. They shared the Nobel Prize. Now. H. G. Khurana, also known for synthesizing an artificial gene in the laboratory, after knowing what codon codes for what amino acid. Now the question is, if you understand which triplet codon codes for which amino acid, how it is useful? Just see, it is like you have got dictionary of codons. With all the amino acids, if you know that this particular protein contains so many amino acids, then you can trace back how many nitrogen, what kind of nitrogen base sequence it must be having, what where it is located. It's like you are going back. See the protein. What are the types of amino acids? Then each amino acid coded by what triplet codon? If you understand with that triplet coding language, you have to can identify the DNA. Right? This is how we can identify the genes language of genes you have the whole lot of language for all the genes so what are genes genes are controlling our character if you know the genetic coding language properly then you can find out why the person or the organism looks like this what are the nitrogen bases involved in it which gene is involved in it so it's like a beautiful thing once you understand the whole of genetic coding language right so this is a most important discovery that happened in the field of genetics right so let's now learn how are these 64 codons helping for the formation of 20 amino acids only 64 codons is too huge right how they are going to form the amino acids right now i want you to write first that coding language then we can continue with this okay the name of scientist you remember let us now talk about the characters of the triplet coding language right the characters i'll give you the characters of genetic code so first i want you to know that what is the coding language and how these coding languages or how these nitrogen bases are going to produce the amino acids so characteristic features of genetic code first characteristic feature is genetic code is triplet so that's the first thing because it's one which was the basic of this it is genetic code is triplet what is triplet that means three nitrogen see always you should write like this in examination they will ask you write a, write the characteristic features of genetic code most of my students i say they directly enter the subject without even saying it is triplet coding language at first you should write nitrogen bases if the three nitrogen bases form one codon that equals to one amino acid this is how we are write triplet coding language means three nitrogen bases form one codon one codon is equal to one amino acid this is the triplet coding language second point in genetic coding language if it is triplet coding language genetic code will produce totally 64 combinations but it is very high compared to the required 20 amino acids but apart from the 64 combinations around three nitrogen base or three codons codons namely uaa uag and uga are not going to code for any amino acids they are called as nonsense codons actually they call them as nonsense codons because they don't sense any amino acids nonsense codons they call it or we call them as terminator codons therefore uh, leaving those three remaining 61 only are the meaningful codons so among the 64 combinations you have to leave the three codons those are the nonsense codons of the codon that are terminator codons therefore with this 
we get another character genetic code has only 61 meaningful codons and talking about meaningful codons right first of they have certain meaning for the amino acids remaining three are nonsense codons these are sense codons they are nonsense or they are the terminate codons or the stop codons so all the other names also you are supposed to know it is not only nonsense codons they are the stop codons or they are also called as the terminator codons ok so therefore among all the codons the ones that are involved in production of meaningful amino acids are only 61 3 are nonsense codons ok now the fourth one fourth characteristic which is still 61 is too high no we wanted only 20 but there is 61 meaningful codons I am saying then what are they going to code for so all those 61 they code for which amino acid now next characteristic you remember genetic code is degenerative this is one word you remember or degeneracy of codons what is degenerative the codons when they code for amino acids they are so many amino acids many codons may code means that means more than one codon may code for one amino acid right means they are degenerative many codes for single amino acid some of them right for example I will give you a with example the amino acid namely proline the name of the amino acid is proline this is coded by the four codons CCC, CCG, CCA, CCU. All of these code for only amino acid proline. That means so many are coding. You can observe. So naturally, all the codes can be working. Right? All the 61 combinations are there. For only 20 amino acids, there are some amino acids that are coded by more than one triplet codon that is why we call it the degenerative codons codons are called degenerative or it is called degeneracy of codons one example i have given you probably like that lot of around six to seven such codons will come such six to seven amino acids are there that are going to be coded by more than one triplet codon some are coded by two some are coded by three some are coded by four not more than four right Therefore, all must be useful, but there are some amino acids which are coded by only one triplet codon, like AUG. Right? If you think of AUG, it will not show degeneracy of codons, AUG equal to methionine. Already we discussed during translation. AUG codes for methionine very perfectly only one codon. But here I give an example of proline, it is coded by four triplet, four types of triplet codons. All of them they are coding for proline only. Remember this. So, first make these points. Okay. Now, the next characteristic of this coding language that is continuation of this you can understand now. Once I explain you about proline, you understood that there are some amino acids like proline they are coded by more than one triplet codon. Now the question is, if they are coding like that, what is the deciding factor? Right? So that is the next point, maybe fifth or sixth I said, sixth point I would say. If there is undergoing degeneracy of codons, imagine if I written CCC, CCG, CCU, CCA. All are coding for proline acid. Here one thing you can observe very common is first two codons are common in all. Not same, codons are common. Only last bases are changing you can observe here. Last base is the one which is not anything deciding factor. This is not important at all for the coding language. This is what say that genetic code shows wobble base or it shows wobble hypothesis 
means last nitrogen base of a triplet codon is wobble base it can change it may be a it may be c it may be u or it may be g anything can be there but first two are deciding it may be cc or it may be ag whatever may be there then it means to specify an amino acid only first two nitrogen bases are important not the last one last one is called the wobble base it can change it may be a it may be c it may be g it may be u right therefore it is genetic code shows wobble hypothesis or it shows a wobble base means in a whole, a whole of the triplet codon among the three nitrogen bases given only first two are enough to decide what amino acid to be formed last can be anything it will have no specificity last nitrogen base is a wobble base or it is a non specific base right but with this re results in some other problem what is that seventh this is something called the silent mutation mutation can happen what do you mean by silent mutation imagine mrna we have like this okay okay maybe this is double strand dna i am talking about dna first dna to mrna can happen then we have c c c here g g g here okay then whenever mrna is copied from this suppose it has made a mistake it has copied instead of g g g it has copied c c some chain g it has happened means instead of c c c it has brought c c g then when it formed this is mrna this is dna when this mrna triplet codon has done mistake instead of copying c it has copied g then during the amino acid formation there is no problem there will be again prolin instead of c c c it has brought c c g then also it become prolin only there is no change in the type of amino acid although there is change in the last nitrogen base so this will happily form prolin in form of right protein only but there is a change what is the change happening last nitrogen base has undergone mutation such mutation that will not bring about any new character or one nitrogen base is changed we call it as a point mutation and this is called the silent mutation the mutation in which the there is no change in the total formation of amino acids that is what we call it as silent mutation okay so write small point small note on silent mutation okay so first thing i what i told is in the wobble hypothesis we can observe that first two nitrogen bases are only deciding the type of amino acid but this is not true with all the amino acids few amino acids have more than one triplet coding language all those coding for that particularly one amino acid they have only last nitrogen base which is modified it is changed therefore last base we call the wobble base this is a wobble hypothesis but this bring about another characteristic with another new thing new mutation we call it as silent mutation what is silent mutation among the three nitrogen bases only first two are specific the last one is non specific the last one is called the non specific codon or we call it as the wobble base still there is no change in the amino acid there is no change in the protein but nitrogen base has changed this we call it as the silent mutation do you understand this so what are we explained till now let me list it out so first genetic code definition genetic code is the coding language of nitrogen bases that produce particularly amino acids during translation right now from where the genetic code has brought it has been brought from the dna dna analyzes and is copied to the mrna mrna is only translating so the coding language of dna is expressed in mrna mrna to the amino acid that's a central dogma right now this coding language what is that which is going to produce amino acid is called genetic code this genetic code actually consists of only four nitrogen bases which have to produce 20 amino acids this was the basic 
But among this coagulus, earlier people, earlier scientists, they thought that the genetic code may be singlet. If you consider singlet coding language, one nitrogen base will code for one amino acid. But if this is a coding language, then it is going to produce only four codons. Adenine to one, guanine to one, cytosine to one, uracil to one, only four amino acids can be formed. But we wanted totally 20 amino acids. Therefore, this is not a right coding language. Later they tried the doublet coding language. What is doublet coding language? Taking two nitrogen bases into consideration that can produce one amino acid. And I gave a checkerboard like thing, a table I gave you. In that 16 combinations are possible where two two nitrogen bases are forming one amino acid. That, that, those were all failed theories. Don't write all these. I'm just saying how it started. Right? But doublet coding language results in only 16 combinations, but we wanted 20 combinations. Therefore, this is not a right coding language. Then scientists, namely Hargobin Corona and our Marshall Nirenberg, they tried with the triplet coding language. What is triplet coding language? Three nitrogen bases will code for one amino acid. If that is a triplet coding language, then how many are possible combinations? The possible combinations are 64. It's a huge number. So this is your homework. I told you, make a table of all triplet codons of 64 combinations. Write for each coding language what amino acid. And I want, if you are really aiming at need, you have to buy out all the codons. All for 20 amino acids, you buy out all codons. First, instead of just take, first make the table, then take down amino acids, all 20 amino acids, write their codons. Then buy out. This is a simple way. Buy out all the codons and the, this is the only thing I am saying, buy out it. Right? Because this kind of coding languages will be asked in the neat question paper means which code which I mean I said like that they'll give you the match the following matching the two columns therefore you need to buy heart them right so not only writing by heart them if possible make a wise note of it read them off and by heart them and send okay that will be the target for you okay you do it anyway you are a little free now just sit and by heart them right a, A U G, methionine, C C G, C C U, C C A, C C C, prolin. Like that, you by heart all of them and keep it with you. Any night question paper you just go through, and nowadays you have time now. Basically, all question papers of need you just go through. You can see one question of genetic code. Definite it is. Therefore, go through this. Right? Then I gave you the characteristic of genetic code. Okay? So have the code, the complete characteristics, one I told you, genetic code is triplet, second I said, meaningful codons of 61, because three are nonsense codons, or terminator codons, next is, first, next is genetic code show degeneracy of codons, because many of them, sometimes one amino is coded by more than one triplet codon, then next I said, that among the coding language, among the three nitrogen bases, first two are deciding the type of amino acid. Last base is called the wobble base, it's according to wobble hypothesis. Then last one, I just now I told you silent mutations. If there is a type of degeneracy of codons, if last nitrogen base changes to some other amino acid, some other nitrogen base, there is no change in amino acid, there is no change in protein, but still there is a change in nitrogen base, it is called a mutation. But it is silent mutation. Mutations are the changes that are hereditary, sudden heritable changes are called mutations. But this mutation is silent. It will not show any significant change in the amino acid or change in the protein. This is the important characteristic of genetic code. You remember this? Some more I will give you. Now, first note them down. What characters I explain you right now? Genetic code. So what I told you, genetic code is the coding language of nitrogen bases that can produce an amino acid during translation. Okay. So where it had got this codons? So you already know that DNA, which had the information, right? This was a DNA. It got unwound, and from this DNA, nitrogen base messages, which are there, suppose A, T, G, C is there. 
Then this message is copied on mRNA G to C, G to C, T to A, A to U. Like this message is from the DNA template is transferred to messenger RNA. So once messenger RNA brings the nitrogen bases to ribosomes, so ribosomes are here. This is a ribosome having nitrogen bases on the of the mRNA. These codons, these are called the coding language. Suppose it has got A, C, U, then these codons have to be transferred to the amino acid language. This is done by tRNA. tRNA is a clover leaf like structure. It has anti codons here. Almost complementary to this. For this A, you have U. For C, you have G. For U, you have A. And according to the anti codon, this is called the anti code. This is called the coding language of the codon. And according to the anti codon, particular amino acid of for this it will bind to this. Any amino acid may be it may be cyto, the cytidine or it may be proline, it may be methionine. Anything can bind based on the type of anti codons it has at the tip of the tRNA. Now these codons I told you according to genetic code they are read three at a time. We call it as a triplet coding language. So three nitrogen bases equal to one amino acid. So what characters I gave is first characteristic. If you consider triplet coding language, how many possible combinations you have? So possible combinations, if you take three at a time, you have totally sixty-four combinations. Exa example I told you, you can start with C also. C U G A. Imagine this is one side I'm writing C U G A, right? This is the coding language I'm saying. Here we have for each one again C U G A. Second one again C U G A. Like this you make the column C C C from one codon, C C U from another codon, C C G for another codon, C C A is another codon. Next one is C U C C U C. C U U, C U G, C U A, C U A. So imagine like this: all the 16, these squares are going to fill it up. 16 into 4, we have got totally 64 combinations. But what was the aim of our genetic coders? To code for 20 amino acids because only in nature there are only 20 amino acids found. These 20 amino acids have to be coded by 4 nitrogen bases. And this is called the triplet coding language. This is going to produce around 64 combinations. 16 squares, we have 4 4 combinations. So it is totally 64 combinations. So based on these 64 combinations, there were various characteristics were made in genetic code. What were the characteristics of genetic code? This was given by scientist Hargobind Khorana, H.G. Khorana and his guide Marshall Nirenberg. Marshall Nirenberg in 1968, they discovered the coding language as triplet coding language and for that they won the Nobel award. H.G. Khorana, Marshall Nirenberg and Robert Hawley, three people they shared the night. This Nobel Award. So, what are these going to do? I am revising again. See, everything you understand properly. 64 combinations are there. So, what was the first characteristic I told you? First characteristic should be what is triplet codon? So, genetic code is triplet. So, codons are 3 nitrogen bases coding for 1 amino acid. This is forming totally how many? 64 combinations. But all the 64 cannot code for the 20 amino acids because there are three nitro three codons present here are nothing but nonsense codons, namely UAA, UAG, and UGA. They are the nonsense or they are the terminator codons. They are going to end the protein synthesis. They are not coding for any amino acids. Then the third one, what I said is due to which only 61 are the meaningful codons because you are minus. You are reducing 64 codons minus 3 is equal to 61 are only the meaningful codons. Still there are more, right? We wanted 20 amino acids but there are 61 codons. How are they going to code 61 combinations? How they form the 20 amino acids? 
then the fourth characteristic what I told us, some of the amino acids like prolin, this is the name of amino acid, this is coded by four triplet codons, namely CCC, CCG, CCG and CCU and CCA. All these codons are going to form only one amino acid that is prolin. Whether it is CCC, it is prolin only. CCG, also it is prolin. Or it is CCU or CCA, all are going to form the amino acid prolin. This characteristic we call it as degeneracy of codons. Genetic code is said to be degenerative. Means one amino acid is not specific to only one triplet codon. More than one triplet codons may code for the amino acid. This is what we call it the degeneracy or degenerative codons. Now, next characteristic I told you, you can see here, if all these are going to produce only protein, there is something which is very common. First two nitrogen bases, you can see all these are same. Last one is only differing. This indicates that the last codon is not specific. First two nitrogen bases in a triplet codon will produce the amino acid. Last codon can be anything. If at all CC will decide it to be prolin, it is done. Last nitrogen base, whichever it comes, is not going to change. It may be last codon may be C or it is U or it is G or A. It is going to become prolin only. Therefore, the last base is said to be wobble base. So, the last codon or last nitrogen base of a triplet codon is wobble base. It's Anything can happen. It's called the wobble base. This is called the wobble hypothesis. Means last nitrogen base will not take any importance in identifying the coding language. Only first two are enough to decide. So this leads to, I told you, something called the silent mutation. What do you mean by silent mutation? Again, I told you, mutation is a sudden heritable chain. Last nitrogen base, if they become changed, instead of CCC, suppose CCG has coded. Still it is going to form proline only. But there is no change in the total protein. But there is a change in nitrogen base. This is not going to form any further mutations or modifications. Therefore the mutation happens. But there is no change observed in the formation of protein. We call it as a silent mutation. So till here we have done it. Now next thing is seventh characteristic. The coding language or genetic code is universal. This you remember now. Universal. What do you mean by universal coding language? See, suppose I said, I have given this example, I will continue the same example. CCG is coding for prolin. Imagine this is in a bacteria. The same codon codes for prolin only. Either it is a virus or it is a protozoa or it is a sponge, it may be a human being, it may be a plant. In all the organisms, the codons score for the same amino acid irrespective of organism. Means this is the coding language, is like a universal language. Anywhere it is same. If you take organisms like bacteria, unicellular, prokaryotes, eukaryotes, plants, anything is fine, but the codons will code for the same amino acid in all. Right? How it is useful? Imagine. Like you have learned the basic language like alphabets, A, B, C, D, T, Z. You can make the words, maybe you can write a textbook for first standard, second standard or you may write it for a thesis also. Means you know the whole language, whole words you know. Means they mean the same thing. If I say G, O is go, in any area you write it, it is going to have the same meaning. Same way, if CCG forms prolin in bacteria, it is going to form prolin only in any given organism. This is the most important thing you should know. That is the reason why nowadays the new technology has come, that is genetic engineering. What is genetic engineering explaining you? Genetic engineering is genes are engineered. Engineering is cutting and patching. So if suppose in humans, imagine, the insulin producing gene is defective. Just I am directly giving you the application. Insulin, I hope you know what is the function of insulin. Insulin in liver, it helps in the conversion of excessive glucose into glycogen. Right? This insulin is produced in the pancreas. It travels through the blood and works in the liver. 
If this is defective, the person will not convert the glucose into glycogen. There is no insulin production. That means the person will suffer from diabetes mellitus. This you know already. So if that is the case, you need to have insulin to that person. Nowadays, you know, all diabetic patients will take insulin injections. But nowadays, a new therapy has come that's called the gene therapy. What is gene therapy? That particular gene that was coding for insulin, if it is defective, it is modified. Means, if you know the complete sequence of nitrogen bases that are going to produce insulin, where there is problem, that particular gene you have to cut and insert the new gene. From where do you get the gene? You can get it from either bacteria, you can get it from any other animal, you can get it from cow or sheep, anything is fine. So, that gene can be inserted from any other organism because they have common basic coding language that is triplet coding language. Therefore, genetic engineering totally is based on the complete language of genetic code. Once you understood, this becomes simple, right? So, universality of codons explains you that although we are all different organisms, we are basically formed by the same language. That is coding language, is genetic coding language. That is having the same codons. That's why I told you, triplet coding language, the whole table you write and write for each one what triplet codon to what amino acid, what triplet codon, what amino acid. Total 20 amino acids, all the codons you need to buy heart if you are really interested in meat. Right? Otherwise, you can just remember then word of the triplet codon is going to form one amino acid. No. You read all the 64 combinations, leaving the three, 61 codons you have to buy heart. Right? Because you can see all India medical examination questions or in a, the, our need any examination, these kind of one or two questions are there. Just go through the question paper, they are there. Therefore, you have to buy heart on the coding language with the language, triplet codon with the amino acid. Okay? So, the next character what I told you is genetic code shows universality. Means it is universal for all the organisms. The basic plan is same in all organisms. Even you should know one thing. Human codons, human genes almost are almost 50 to 60 percent of genes are similar to the bacteria E. coli. Means so many things we are having similarities, right? Therefore, genetically we have same coding language. Now, next characteristic I give you. So, let me list. First one is genetic code is triplet. Second one says genetic code on meaningful code on 61. Third characteristic, the genetic code shows degeneracy of code ons, means one amino acid is coded by more than one triplet code on. Next I said the wobble hypothesis by wobble base. The third nitrogen base in the triplet codon is wobble base. Then it leads to silent mutation. Next, I told you, genetic code is universal. All the organisms have the same coding language. Then, next characteristic is genetic code is non overlapping. Non overlapping. So, what do you mean by non overlapping? See, always if I say genetic code, it is bringing you to the old thing that is translation. Genetic code is decided only for the translation. What is translation? The triplet codons present of the mRNA are transferred to the amino acid language. So imagine this is the triplet coding language I have written here. 5 prime to 3 prime we have mRNA. This is messenger RNA. Okay? It has messages here. All these are triplet codons. Right? Anything you can write. A, A, C, C, G, G, A, R, A, C, G, something like that. So, this is codon number 1, this is codon number 2, codon number 3, codon 4, codon 5. Like this, continue, right? Whenever tRNA is reading this, suppose tRNA reads this as codon number 1, then it will not reread the same thing. It is, once it is read, it is over, it will go to the next codon. This is read, over, okay? First one is done, right? Next it will read the second one. Suppose it rereads the red messages again. Okay? Instead of CCC, if it is reading ACC, this will become suppose this is amino acid 1, this may form amino acid number 5. Wrong amino acid is formed. So if it will reread the messages, then it is going to form a wrong type of amino acid. Therefore, this is actually overlapped coding, overlapping in 
coding language which is wrong. This is called non-overlapping type. So normally genetic coding languages of non-overlapping type. This is right. So whenever you are writing in the examination, this way they will they can give you because they are anyway using that need now. You need to know if this diagram is there, what it is indicating. Right? Because they will explain you. This with diagram only they ask you what is this explaining. This simply says that once the first codons are read, they are never re-read by tRNA during translation. First codon is read, done. Next codon, next codon like that will be reading continuously without overlapping. Therefore, the characteristic is non-overlapping coding language. If it overlaps, there will be mutation, there will be problem, there will be genetic disorders. Right? Same way, there is another characteristic, genetic code is restless or it is comma less code on you correct. What do you mean by this? Same thing again I will give you another example. Again mRNA I am writing 5' to 3' and right? codons I am reading. There will not be gap but just for you to understand I am writing the gap. Okay? I told you anything you can write. Whatever I am writing you need not to write same things again and again. Okay? Whenever it is reading like you must be knowing this is the first codon. Once it is read this, there are no codons acting like a comma codes. There is no comma. Like earlier you learned something called the codons are having stop codons. Stop codons means they stop the process of protein synthesis. But the same way you cannot say that there is some comma in between. The codons are read. Once it is read, done. Next this will be read. Next this will be read. There is no rest. So if it is read, then there is no comma here. No codons are having comma character. Means they will not rest in between. When the reading is happening by tRNA, it reads one after the other, one after the other continuously the codons. Never it will act, any codon will not act like a comma codon, the rest code. Okay, now you take rest, then you continue. No. But there are stop codons. At the end, there are stop codons which we call it as the, the terminator codons, UAA. UGA, UAG. These three are called as the stop codons or the terminator codons. They will not come in between. If they come in between, the protein synthesis stops. They will come normally at the end of translation. Therefore, they are called as the stop codons or the terminator codons. But the same way, there is no comma code. Therefore, it is said to be restless coding language. Means, if it start reading from 5' prime to 3', prime, it is continuous. No rest in between. Only when it needs the last codon, it will stop. Therefore, it is a restless coding language or comma-less coding language. Okay? Then, one more characteristic that is genetic code has direction. It has direction. Imagine, I told you, 5 prime CCG, 3 prime is going to form prolin. Any example I can take, I am taking only proline example. If you read it from 5' prime to 3', prime, it is going to form proline. But the reverse way it is not proline. If you write reverse way it is GCC, this is not going to be proline. Means you have to always mention the codons in certain direction. 5' prime to 3' prime only they have some meaning. If they are read in the reverse direction, they are going to form different amino acids. Therefore, they have to be read with the direction. We cannot just write, okay, CCG proline, no. 5' prime, CCG 3' prime is proline. Just CCG is not proline. CCG, we don't know whether you are talking from 3' prime to 5' prime or 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Therefore, CCG is not proline. 5' prime to 3' prime CCG is proline. Right? So, therefore, this has a direction. Then the last characteristic I will give you, I will genetic code, is the last one. There is no ambiguity in codons. Means, right now I told you, genetic code is non-ambiguous. Right? Just I told you that one amino acid may be coded by more than one triplet codon. Means, many codons are there, only one amino acid is there. But the reverse is not true. Means one triplet codon is not going to code for many amino acids. This is the meaning. So what do you mean by this? One codon will not code for 
many amino acids. But one amino acid can be coded by many triplet codons is true. Right? Understand what you mean by non-ambiguity of codons. Means one codon will not mean the same thing for any amino acid. Only one codon to one amino acid only. But that amino acid may be coded by some more triplet codons also is true. Right? Like it's like for one work, many people are appointed. Right? For some work to be done, three to four people are arranged. Suppose one is not working, another one will work at least. That is the first one, degeneracy of codons. But each codon is specific. That will not code for the lysine also, glycine also. No, it is going to code for only one amino acid. That's why we call it as a non-ambiguity of triplet coding language. Okay? So that's the total story of genetic code or genetic code. This you need to understand all the different characteristics right so let me go from back to the first one last one i told you genetic code is non ambiguous means one codon is specific for one amino acid is not going to for produce many amino acids that's the first one next one is that genetic code has direction it has to be read in particular direction 5 prime to 3 prime that will form one particular amino acid the reverse way is not going to form the same amino acid Next, I said genetic code is restless or commaless. Whenever genetic code is converting or translating to amino acids, it is the process is continuous. No any codon act as a stop codon or the comma codon. It is from 5 prime till 3 prime. It is continuously reading without taking rest. Therefore, it is called the restless coding language or the commaless coding language. Then, after that, I told you about the codon is a non overlapping whenever it is translating then once red message is there one triplet codon is read by tRNA another tRNA will not read the same codon once again once it is read it is left out next codon is read after that that is left next codon is read therefore it is called as a non overlapping coding language next is genetic code is universal before this I told you universality means Every code is specifically producing particular amino acid. The same specificity will continue from a bacteria to human beings. Every organism has a basic coding language of same. Therefore, it is a universal coding language. Then I said the genetic code has a degeneracy character. Means one amino acid may be coded by more than one triplet codon. Like I gave example of prolin coded by CCG, CCC, CCU, CCA. All are forming prolin only. If that is true, the reverse way you don't write it. That condition is called degeneracy of codons. Among these so many codons coding for the same amino acid, first two nitrogen bases are common, last one is different. Therefore, last one can be any code, then any nitrogen base. The triplet codon, first two nitrogen bases are only deciding factors. They decide what amino acid has to be formed. Last one, whether it is C or G or it is A, it is immaterial. Therefore, we call the last codon as a wobble base. In a last, in a some particular codon, triplet codon, last base, last nitrogen base is said to be a wobble base, wobble nitrogen base. And with that, another example I gave you, another characteristic I gave was the silent imitation. If there is change in the last nitrogen base, there is no change in amino acid, change, no change in protein, but there is a mutation happened. This mutation is not expressive. Therefore, we call it as a silent mutation. Then I said genetic code is triplet, three nitrogen bases for the one amino acid, and all producing 64 combination among 64 combination, only 61 are the meaningful codons, three codons are non sense codons. They don't sense any amino acid or they are called terminator codons. They are called the stop codons. Okay. That's a genetic code. It is a very important thing to understand because in future when I talk about biotechnology, when I talk about the lack of overall, these things we are going to use. So this is like a base of the molecular biology. Okay. Learn all this and make that homework by heart on the codons. Okay. Fine then. So once we are finished with genetic code, let us now move on to the RNA because 
I already explained you about the process of protein synthesis where I explained you transcription and translation. Right? And you have understood one more thing. Transcription happens by copying of the nitrogen based messages of DNA to messenger RNA. Right? Messenger RNA is formed one after the other. Suppose this is the double stranded DNA, it will unwind at particular position. It will be like this double stranded DNA. It will unwind and the messages present here, they are copied one after the other to mRNA. Okay? How? It is not once for, once for all it is built. Suppose it is A, it will be T here. It is C, it is G. It is G, it is C. It is T, it is A. It is T, it is A. Like this it will be there. Then RNA polymerase enzyme is here. This is going to form the DNA, mRNA. For A, U will bind. For T, A. For C, G. For C, G. For A, U. Like this mRNA is formed. This process is called transcription. Transcription is the process in which DNA at that particular region where the gene is present, that part only will unwind. Nitrogen based messages of one strand are copied to messenger RNA. This process is called transcription. It is copying of nitrogen based messages from the one strand of DNA, a part of DNA into mRNA by complementary base pairing. We call it as transcription. So now how is mRNA formed? It is formed only by DNA. Because RNA don't have the ability to self-replicate. They have to be produced by DNA only. Okay? This is messenger RNA. Now we will have to learn about the characteristic of total RNAs. We have three RNA, mRNA, tRNA, rRNA. Now one by one I will give you the characteristic features of RNA. What are the normal characteristics, general characteristics of RNA? Then we go to the details, right? That is RNA. Ribonucleic acid. So it has the first point, it has ribose sugar, right? First point is it has ribose sugar, right? How is ribose sugar? It has the structure like this. This is OH group, here it is H, here it is H, OH, this is the OH group H, H, CH2, OH. First carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. So, it's a pentose sugar having the complete ribose sugar. Pentose sugar it is. Right? It's a ribose sugar. RNA is made of ribose sugar. Then normally, it is single stranded. It has one strand only. No double strands. Like right? Single strand will be like this. Okay, 5 prime to 3 prime, 1 strand, I don't think this is the one value. Okay, then what are the nitrogen bases present here? Nitrogen bases of RNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracin. Right? One second. Okay, so nitrogen bases of RNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracin. Right? Here, as I told you, they are single stranded, but sometimes they may undergo false base pairing. How it will happen? Let me explain you. Suppose this is the strand of the RNA. Here we have 5 prime, here we have 3 prime. Suppose you have A, A, A here, and suppose you have C, 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 and here you have U, U, U. What happens? This A, A, A is complemented to U, 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 not C, C, C. Therefore, this may form a loop like structure. Where A, A, A will pair with U, 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 they are no pairing, and C, C, C remain like this at the loop. Therefore, this pairing is not true pairing, it is called the false base pairing. So, in RNA, you may get false base pairing. Nitrogen bases undergo false pairing sometimes. If they pair, in between whatever nitrogen bases are there, they form the loop like structure. That's why in tRNA you get some loops here and three types of loops you are getting it. Otherwise, this is a base pairing is happening, this is called the false base pairing. And this base pairing is happening in this format A double bond U, G double bond C or U to A, C to G. This is AU GC pairing. As I told you, it is not for all the time pairing. Sometimes it pairs also, this way it may pair, right? This is another characteristic of RNA. Now, 
Apart from this, what all are the characteristics of RNA? RNA will not undergo self replication. RNA is produced by DNA. RNA is formed. Formed by DNA. Right? They are self replicating. And mostly, RNA is non hereditary. It is not going to get hereditary except for certain virus that are affecting plant. No, most of, some of the plant viruses are RNA viruses. Otherwise, they are all DNA viruses. But in those where RNA is hereditary, in only those where the genetic material is RNA, that is hereditary. Otherwise, normally RNA is not a hereditary material. It is not going to transfer the character from parents to the offsprings. But DNA is only hereditary. You have learned the experiments. Do you remember the experiments? Griffith's experiment using R strain and S strain. Then Avery's experiment proving the DNA is hereditary by separately taking the proteins and RNA and DNA. And he found that protein is not bringing the hereditary characters from S strain to R strain. Or neither the protein or RNA. It is only DNA which is going to be hereditary. Therefore, this is never hereditary except for some of the plant viruses I told you. Next is, its other characteristic. Apart from non-hereditary, it is helping for protein synthesis. Okay, it will help in protein synthesis. Synthesis, but it is guided by DNA, right? These are the characteristics of RNA, right? General characteristics, right? Now one by one, I'll discuss. That's about the mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. Okay? So these are the general characters. You are going to write this as your homework. That's RNA and its characteristic features. Coming to the next one, the types of RNA. Okay. We have types as 3 mRNA or the messenger RNA, so it's small m. Okay. tRNA or the transfer RNA, rRNA or the ribosomal RNA. So we have 3 types of RNA, mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. What is mRNA? It is the messenger RNA. Because it brings the message from DNA to the ribosome, we call it as the messenger RNA. How is the mRNA? mRNA structure I give you now. This in board examination, you get it for 2 or 3 mark question. 5 prime end, this is 3 prime end. And mRNA, I told you, we have two types, HNRNA and mature mRNA. HNRNA is heteronuclear RNA and mature mRNA. There are two types. What is HNRNA? First let me give you that is happening in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes you get heteronuclear RNA. So what are eukaryotes? The organism that contain true nucleus. What is true nucleus? They have a nuclear membrane. Right? In eukaryotes whenever the Transcription happens by the DNA. This mRNA, the long mRNA, 5 prime to 3 prime, it contains some of the non-coding sequences in between. These non-coding sequences are called as introns. The coding sequences are called exons. So, before entering the translation, this mRNA will get modified. And already we discussed it. But anyway, let me know, let me explain you. Here, all these which are non-coding, here is non-coding, here is non-coding, these are non-coding sequences, they are going to cut and remove. This is called splicing. There is splicing happening where there is exonuclease activity. Exonuclease activity happens. What happens here? All the introns get cut. Introns are cut and removed. And exons are joined. This results in all exons side by side, they will come and they will join. Right? This is a 5 prime, 3 prime. This is a mature RNA. Before that, as it has so many things, this is called the HNRA. This is a mature mRNA. This is ready to undergo translation. Okay? That's about the eukaryote. But in prokaryotes, you have regular mRNA, what I am writing. 
So after bodies are mature, the mRNA is formed, some more things happen, there will be capping and there will be formation of poly A tail. That capping is by first portion, methylation happens in the first part and last part, multiple 200, 300, adenine will be added to the end of 3 prime. This is how it gets ready for translation. Now this is mRNA. The first region we get this one as the cap region of mRNA. This is the region avoiding other binding of other RNA students. Then all our coding language, coding, coding nitrogen bases which are coded interpolate coding language. The first codon always will be AUG. We call this as an initiator codon. Initiator codon is codes for amino acid methionine. AUG is a coding language. First codon. To start with always it should be AUG. It is called the initiator codon. Remaining all our coding languages. All these are coding languages. We call this as the exon. Or the coding sequence. Sequences. Okay. Or we call them as exons. Now at the end you get a terminator codon here. This is the terminator codon. Any number of terminator codons are there, but only one will be present here. Terminator codons, which may be UAA, UAG, or UGA. These are the terminator codons. So UAA or UGA or U, all will not be there. UAG. That's a terminator codon. So till here only is a coding language. Okay? Till here. Others are these are not coding languages. At the end, you get multiple AAAA. We call this as the poly A T at the end. So this is the structure of mRNA, which may be given for the, in the board for two or three mark question. Otherwise, explanation with the drawing it will be four or five mark question. Okay. So now, what next you have to write? This is the structural detail. And then you have to write how it has originated. Who has formed this? This is being, these are being formed during transcription by the DNA one part where it was copied in a complementary base pair sequence by RNA polymerase enzyme. See, always remember the enzymes. RNA polymerase produce RNA. DNA polymerase produce DNA. RNA polymerase, if it is producing the RNA based on the DNA nitrogen base as a the template, we call it as a DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme, right? So, from the DNA as a template, it produces RNA. Here, therefore, it is an enzyme name as DNA dependent RNA polymerase, right? Then, some of the time, DNA is produced based on the nitrogen bases present in DNA only. Therefore, DNA dependent DNA polymerases, right? Because they are forming another DNA on the base of DNA only. Therefore, that is called DNA dependent DNA polymerase. And that again I told you DNA polymerase are 3, 1, 2, 3. Polymerase 2 and 3 are helping for the replication process. Polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 1 is a proof reading enzyme. So that's about the RNA. I told you RNA is formed by the help of RNA polymerase enzyme during transcription where nitrogen based messages from one part of the DNA are copied to the messenger RNA. Then where it is located? It is located both in the nucleus and cytoplasm because when it was forming, it was in the nucleus. After formation, it gets detached from the DNA in the nucleus. It comes out through the nuclear pore and settles on the ribosome. Therefore, it is in the cytoplasm also. Its location is both the DNA and RNA. Then structure this. And in eukaryotes, it will be HNRNA which will get modified or purified by removing non-coding sequences from the mature RNA but in prokaryotes is regular RNA like this. Okay? So mRNA structure you remember even for the need and for the mode. Okay? Then next class we will deal with the tRNA and RNA. Okay, bye.